So this thing's out of the box now and I want to show you some of the adjustments that you need to make before we can start mowing with it. Right, first off the handlebar is going to come out of the box folded down. So all you need to do is remove these screws right here and then fold it into place put those back into place. And I also wanted to show you this handy little pouch that comes with it. So this little pouch is nice because you can have all your tools in here and just keep everything that you need right there. It's nice to have right there and then you don't have to go looking for your tools. So this is just gonna be mainly what you're gonna use to tighten the screws. This is some adjustments for the actual reel and things like that. Next thing we'll be adjusting this right here so that we can adjust the handlebars to the right height for me, and I'm not sure what's gonna be perfect. It's probably gonna take a little bit of time to actually use the machine to see what feels comfortable, but I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit here, kind of stand next to the handlebar and see what it feels like. Right, the other thing to adjust here, which is very simple as well, is this actual handlebar piece. It comes kind of in the box at an upward angle, so you want to move it just so it feels comfortable for you. I'm going to try this in this position, otherwise I might go a little bit more of an angle here, just depending on what feels comfortable when I'm using the machine. But there's just going to be one little bolt here to put in. It's going to have a locking nut on the other side, so you need both of your little tools to get that done, but pretty easy. And just kind of adjust it as you go, whatever feels comfortable. Okay, now I've shut off this little gas shut off here, so that is just uh, to make sure that we have all the gas supply shut off while I'm going to adjust the actual reel now. So I've tilted it back now as well onto the handlebars. This is just going to give us a little bit easier access to the reel and so we can make sure everything's adjusted. Okay, so hopefully you can see it here in the camera, but this is the bed knife right here and then you can see the reel just lightly touching it right there. We don't want it to be too tight. It should freely spin around there, but we're going to test it with a sheet of paper to make sure that it's cutting all the way across. It should cut the paper cleanly all the way across the reel. All right, if you watch this corner right here, it's not really cutting it all that well. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit. There's just a little adjuster right here, and there's one on each side. So that and one right here as well. So that's gonna, we're gonna tighten this clockwise a little bit to see if we can tighten this down a little bit so that it cuts a little bit better on that corner. Okay, so that was a, just a tiny little turn on there and that made a, quite a bit of difference there on cutting this thing. That is something right there that you're going to have to be checking before you mow each time. You want to check to make sure the adjustments are right with the reel to the bed knife because it's very important to get the best cut. I also should have mentioned that you should definitely be wearing gloves when you do that test. I should have been wearing gloves for sure and I just didn't grab a pair, but definitely wear some gloves. Make sure that you don't cut yourself. Right, the oil is all set up, ready to go. I just checked the dipstick to make sure there was enough in there and we're good to go there. So make sure you tighten that back up. And then you need to put some gas in next. I want to adjust the height of cut, so that little screw on the right hand side has to be loosened a little bit because that's the locking screw that keeps in position. And I'll move to the other side and show you how to easily change the height of the cut. Right, so right here is pretty easy. It has a little guide here on the side that's going to give you all the measurements. And then you're just going to unlock this, pull that out. It's just a little locking thing. And then just use this handle to go up and down. So all the way back is the highest, all the way forward is going to be the lowest cut.
So I hope you enjoyed that footage. I just kind of wanted to share a few thoughts here after I've used the mower just a couple times. So first and foremost, I want to be very clear that sometime last year, I believe it was last salon season, Swordman sent me an email and said, Hey Ryan, we see that you're very passionate about your lawn, just like we are about our lawns and about our equipment that we make. Would you ever be interested in using a real mower? It wasn't really something that I'd ever really thought about. I only knew real mowers as kind of the manual, old school type. So they sent me a little bit of information about their particular mowers, and that really piqued my interest in trying out something like this. So a little bit of time went by, and then again this past winter, they contacted me again and said, hey, would you be interested in trying out this mower, giving your opinion on it, kind of seeing how you could transform your yard over time into maybe something a little bit different than it was before. So after two uses, which is a very small sample size, I know the machine is absolutely fantastic. I really have never seen my yard have this specific look that it has right now, and that's mainly attributed to one, just the real cut in general because it's cutting more like a scissors instead of the rotary mower, but number two is the full rollers. That makes a huge difference on the way things look, and I'm still cutting right now at an inch and three quarters, so I'm planning on taking that down a little bit at some point, but we are getting into the hottest part of the season here, so I'm going to be doing some testing on that little side yard, the little video that I made about the testing plot, and I'm going to gradually take that down here and see what it looks like and then I'll adjust the rest of the yard depending on what I decide. But it's going to be going lower over time, but going into the hottest part of the season for cool season grass where I am is difficult to kind of just go, go for it all at once here and try to get it down to an inch or less. So that is the overall plan. I was actually surprised that my yard wasn't quite as bumpy as I thought it was going to be and the rolling that I did on it in the previous video actually did help quite a bit more than I thought it would. So as long as you're going slow with the mower, you're not going too crazy of a speed. I don't seem to have too many issues with the bumps. It's not completely level by any means, but I'm a little bit surprised that it's working a lot better than I thought it would. Also, the other thing to mention with that height of cut is that this thing goes all the way to two inches. So if you're looking at getting a mower or something like this, most people are probably thinking that you have to cut it extremely short, and that's really not the case. A real mower in general should just give us a better cut over time, and it's going to be healthier for the grass, even if we're cutting it a little bit higher. Now, I know a lot of you who are at three inches or you like to go up to four inches or have a specific grass type like that, then this isn't an option for you. I get that. But for me, with the Kentucky bluegrass and ryegrass that I mainly have in my front yard there, it's not going to be a problem to actually be cut at two inches if I wanted to go all the way up to that and just keep it there. Keep that in mind, you don't necessarily have to go extremely low with a machine like this either. It is an option to keep a little bit higher. One thing that I've found so far with a little bit higher cut is that you have to stay on top of cutting the grass. So it's going to be probably every two days or something like that or you're gonna to have to be using growth regulators in order to keep it manageable because as soon as the grass gets really tall for a machine like this, if you're trying to cut off an inch or something like that, it's just not gonna do it all in one cut for sure. So you're gonna to have to be double cutting that. I like the look of the double cut myself. It gives me a little bit better patterns and things like that anyway. Right now, I'd say at one and three quarters, even on the first cut, I like the way it looks, but I like to do the double cut just because rolling in a couple different directions as well just looks really, really nice. All right, now that I've had a couple extra days to use the machine a couple times and kind of look through some of the comments and things like that, I wanted to just go ahead with this part of the video here, just a couple days fast forwarded from the rest of what I filmed, and just kind of go through a couple of my additional thoughts, kind of touch on a couple of questions that I saw that seem important as far as understanding the machine and how things work. If you have additional questions, then let me know at the comment section below in this video and then in the upcoming videos when I continue to use this machine, I'll be able to kind of look over what you guys want to know about it, some additional questions that you might have. So please do that. The first thing let's talk about though is one important factor that I didn't talk about when I unboxed the mower and when I did the setup part. And that has to do with the reel and the attachment. And actually when I pulled it out of the box here, I was kind of guiding it with the front of the reel here. And Swordman sent me an email after seeing that video and they just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that you do not want to be moving the mower with the reel or with any of the attachments in there and tugging on that part there. So I wasn't pulling on it, but I was using it to guide. And that's something that you just want to be very careful of. It does say that in the manual. I, once I opened up the manual and I saw that part, I knew I had made a mistake there, but I just wanted to mention that part so that if you do get one of these and you're taking it out of the box, just remember that you don't want to pull or use force on those actual reels or attachments. 
And one of the first questions that I think I received that I wanted to make sure we touched on is just what's the differences between a real mower and a rotary mower. And some people will know this, but some won't. So the way that this thing works is that we have that reel of blades in there. There's a little flat piece of metal underneath here and that's called the bed knife. So when this reel spins around, the grass comes up on that flat piece of metal. It cuts it off pretty much just like a scissors. So that's kind of the difference between a rotary and the reel. The rotary is gonna be spinning around and cutting off the grass, but it's more kind of just ripping off the top of the grass with a blade. And that's why it's very important to have your blades sharp or as sharp as possible, but you're still not going to get kind of the same motion as what happens when a reel cuts off the grass. So those are kind of the differences. And over time, when we continually use a reel and we're getting a really clean cut on the grass blade, that should improve the health of it overall and should limit disease and other things like that. When we rip the top of the grass blade, that's when we have some problems with diseases and just opening up the grass blade to diseases. When we're talking about that reel then, it's also going to be very important that between every mow or before we go out to mow, we're going to adjust the reel or make sure that it's in adjustment, that it's cutting properly. So this is kind of a difference between a traditional rotary mower where you just kind of sharpen the blades every once in a while, put the blade on there, start it up and go. This is a little bit different because you need to make sure that that reel is properly adjusted. You don't want it too tight to where it's not moving around, but also you need it to be tight enough to where it's just barely touching that bed knife there and that's going to give us a good clean cut. So it's pretty easy to adjust and I kind of show that in the setup part, but also if you want to know a lot more about reel mowers and how to set them up, I've been talking with my friend Ben. He has a channel on lawn care called Lawn Tips and he's actually based in Australia and works at a golf course and a vast amount of knowledge on a lot of things dealing with lawn care. So I've been kind of picking his brain on a lot of different things as I've been going through this process. So I'll link to his channel in the description below, but you can check out, he just put out a video on how to set up and adjust your reel mower. So if you're more interested in something like that as well, you can check that out. I'll be doing some more of the specifics as I run into different things with this mower, but I just kind of wanted to mention that if you have some general questions about how all those things work with reel mowers, check out his channel and the video. So some of the things that I've noticed overall to begin with with this mower is that if you saw the video that I put out about mowing with it, you'll know that the stripes are absolutely fantastic. I've really never achieved this kind of stripe in my yard, even when I was using a roll last year it got kind of close to this but with the dual rollers on this thing having a little bit more weight to them than I did with just pushing a roller along it pretty much looks like what you'd see if you're going to a major league ballpark or something like that it has the exact same look of striping you can do a lot of patterns a lot of fun stuff so I'm really looking forward to using it for that purpose, not only in just mowing, but also being able to do some really neat patterns in my yard. Now when we talk about those rollers, there's one thing that I have noticed since I'm cutting a little bit taller, and that's obviously that the grass blade is a little bit taller, so when you roll over it, you're kind of laying everything flat. And the difference between a real mower and a rotary mower is that had we been striping and laying the grass over with a roller with a rotary, then the next time you go over it, the suction of the mower is going to pull up that grass, cut it back off, and then we'll roll it back down again. But the difference between this mower and a rotary is that we don't have any suction when we're using a real mower because we're just going along cutting what's at the surface. There's nothing pulling that grass up to cut it. So you have to keep that in mind that as things are a little bit longer with your grass, if you're cutting it, I was cutting at 1.75 on the mower for that video that I made here of the mowing with it for the first time. And as I've used it a couple more times and I put a few more patterns in the lawn, you just have to realize that the grass is not going to be picked up by the mower. So it's a little bit more difficult with longer grass for it to cut cleanly. Actually what my friend Ben recommended to me is that sometimes you might actually just want to run a rotary mower over top of it to kind of pull up the grass again if you're leaving it long. And I actually did that with my Time Master. It helped out quite a bit to clean things up just a little bit. I wasn't cutting off any grass with that mower. I was just using it as a little bit of suction. But just keep that in mind that as you continue to roll over here, if you're using it on taller grass, it's gonna be a little more difficult to pull up the grass there and completely cut it cleanly. So as we go lower with the cut, then there's not gonna be as much grass blade to fold over there. It's not gonna be as much to lay down. So it shouldn't be a problem at lower cuts. But if you're at the higher cuts, just wanted to mention that fact. And I believe they also have 
a couple of wheels that you can add to this mower instead of using the front roller so it doesn't roll down the grass quite as much for higher grass. That's something that I'll also touch base on with them just to make sure I have that correct, but I'm pretty sure they have some different things if you wanted to keep this long term a little bit higher. Another question I got is how do you sharpen the reel and this is something too that this is my first reel mower so that's a very good question to ask and the way that this works since it's an attachment based system is that we can actually take out this reel and remove it and then we can send it in to be sharpened if we'd like to do that. Now there are some DIY things that you can do to kind of do an in-between sharpening and it's something that in the future I'll probably test out but from what I've been told this should last us quite a while as far as being sharpened and then on the off season uh, we can send this reel in and have it sharpened and then sent back to us. So if you don't want to do something DIY, that's kind of how it works. Or you can possibly find a place locally that does reel mowers or golf course stuff. And you might be able to take it to them and have them sharpen it instead of sending it in as well. But that's a good system that you can remove it from the actual mower. You don't have to take your mower to a complete new location. You can just take the reel itself. That's basically how you would go about sharpening it. My overall first impressions are still that it's just an amazing mower to use. It's very simple to use. I'm only on my fourth or fifth cut right now as far as using it. I feel completely comfortable with the machine, how everything operates. And I'm just learning a little bit more about adjusting the reel and having everything properly done there. That's not too difficult either. You just need to make sure you keep up on it and keep up on learning the machine itself. But I'm going to be soon going a little bit lower on my test spot and we will see how things look over time and how it kind of changes my lawn. But so far, absolutely love the way that it works, love the stripes, love the quality of the cut that I'm getting with the reel as well. And I can't wait to share some more about this mower in the future. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, let me know. We'll see you next time.